What is up, everybody? It's your boy Jake, a.k.a. Korean Jew Trading. And in this episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Pumpy, we will be talking about the amazing Hadera Hashgraph, a.k.a. HBAR. I am really excited about this. Got major 2017 vibes on this one. Think this project is going to be huge. Uh, I'm going to tell you why in a second, but first off, this is not financial advice. If you enjoy these videos, make sure to like them or else I don't want to do them. I want you to like me. Please, 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 please like me. And comment also. I enjoy interacting in the comments sometimes, even if you're an asshole, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, <laughs> you know, I will respond to your comments. If you have questions, as long as you're not a crazy person, uh, comment, like, subscribe. And lastly, if you're interested in learning about trading, um, and, and you want to take your game to the next level, make sure to check out trading-dojo.com. I'm blessed to have four amazing partners, and uh, we run a very amazing trading group. Uh, we've been open for three years. Our members are absolutely crushing it. If you want to learn more, check out the website. The link is in info. Without any further ado, let's get into the show, though. Uh, and first off, I mean, major success on that first uh, video that we did, uh, RSR, up a measly 75%. No, 75%. Yeah, oh yeah, 75%. Yes, yes. It is up 75% in U.S. dollar, which means you would have nearly doubled your money. But it's okay, because I got HBAR for you. And I'm going to tell you why this thing is a monster in hiding, uh, waiting. I don't know. How does that saying go? Monster, uh, it's a fucking, it's going it, to, it's big. It's big. It's really huge. Okay, let's get into it. The good HBAR. This is a uh, blockchain 3.0. And, 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 you know, I'll be honest. If you're out here looking for a guy that's going to explain the tech, like uh, box mining or Ivan on tech, I'm I'm not that guy. I'll be honest. I'm not that guy. I'm the guy that finds value. I don't give a shit. You know, I I know enough to understand that this one is worth this, and it's better than that one that's worth this. That's it. We keep it very very simple. And when you're compar comparing different projects within crypto. That's actually a very successful strategy. Understanding what is overvalued and what is undervalued can make you a crazy amount of money in this game. And that happens to be my calling card. So this one reminds me of something like EOS in 2017. EOS did a crazy raise on their ICO, like a billion dollars, insane amount of hype, and quickly fell out of favor. As soon as it listed, I remember, it pumped in China, it pumped on Bitfinex, it was pumping crazy. Crazy. And then altcoins collapsed as Bitcoin pumped and everybody kind of forgot about EOS, fell to the wayside, as well as VeChain for that matter. Also reminds me kind of a VeChain. But their tech was very, very strong. Their partnerships were very, very strong. And compared to some of the older projects that were in the top 20 or top 10, EOS and VeChain in the bottom quarter of the top 100 appeared to be extremely undervalued to me. Now, some people say, KJ, I don't care about something that's got a $200 million cap. I want something that's got 200,000 so that I can make 100X like real quick. And you got to understand that can happen. That does happen on Uniswap and, and other exchanges as well. But the beauty of, of, of trading something like this is that you never have the problem of not having enough liquidity. 200 million, you can buy as much as you want. And when it pumps, you can sell as much as you want without affecting the market for the most part. Um, that that's not that's pretty underrated. I mean, by by most people, you have to really take that into account uh, because when you do ultimately exit, you want to make sure that there are enough buyers to satisfy yourselves. But when you're looking at something like Hashgraph, why I'm comparing it to EOS is because when this was ICO'd, they raised a hundred million dollars. They have a significant war chest, but they have incredible partnerships. Their tech is is very highly respected and most all of all it's being used uh they had 1.5 1.5 million transactions in september i believe uh let's check that but i think it's right here yeah yeah one point oh 1.5 million transactions per day 1.4 million per day yes yeah so <laughs> sorry about that uh it's it's super fast this is blockchain 3.0 basically um 
and and you know that's that's a cliche that's thrown out out a lot but part of what what classifies something as blockchain 3.0 is the be the the ability for it to make super fast transactions at a very cheap price and that's what it does uh so transactions versus bitcoin which is three and ethereum which is 12 per second uh, Hedera Hashgraph does 10,000 plus per second, which is essentially unlimited speed. It's not the only project that has this level of speed, but it's one of the only projects that have these type of organizations supporting it. You have Google, IBM, Boeing, Deutsche Telekom, LG. These are real heavy hitters running nodes on this infrastructure to to support it. and and. You also have over 500 projects being built on it. Now, what are the projects? Decentralized applications, smart contract plot platforms. This is basically an Ethereum, Tezos, Polkadot, smart contract platform type of competitor. There are other features as well, but like I said, I'm not the tech guy. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this has all anything that you would want to say about these top 10 type smart contract platforms like Tezos and the like, and EOS for that matter, this has. And it also has the big heavy hitter partnerships. Yet, when we look at where it is in the market cap, it's 73rd. Uh, so 200 million. And keep in mind, when we played EOS and VeChain, they, they did 40 to 60x. You know, that's not pennies. That's not chump change. That's serious, serious growth. So I think that this ends up in the top 10. Uh, probably... You know, it's hard to put a date on it, but, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. But, you know, maybe by the summer of next year, I think this breaks into the top, at least the top 20. And if it's able to do that, it's going to grow significantly because we look at where we are right now. Uh, something like Cardano, for instance, you know, not to not to crap on Cardano. It's in the top 10. It's four point seven billion. I think H Hashgraph has the potential to surpass something like that. Polkadot, five point five billion. Hashgraph is only 200, 000, uh, 200 million. So that's why I like this. That's what's good about it. Um, let's talk about what's bad about it, though. What's bad about it? It's pretty simple. Their tokenomics are trash. Like, it's they're really shitty. Kind of like RSR. Bad tokenomics. Um, I think it's three, 300, about 300, uh, 280 to 350 million tokens are being released monthly. Uh, it's very heavy to the founders. So eventually there will be a dumping, uh, but, <clears throat> you know, Ripple's tokenomics weren't great either. So just because they're shitty doesn't mean that it can't pick up traction and, and give you crazy gains. But I did feel that it's important that we mention the tokenomics are very bad, as well as the util utility, uh, the token utility, kind of similar to Ripple and some of these 90% of these other tokens. The token utility isn't great. Um, there is an ability to stake on it. Uh, but you can't actually run a node unless you're somebody really legit. Um, you need to be approved. So most of retail would end up having to kind of add to a node, which is like a bootleg way of staking. I'm not a huge uh, proponent of that. I, I, I say trade it, and when it goes, you, you get out and find something else. But that's just me. Uh, but that's that's pretty much it. That's bad with it. That's it. You know, everything else is good. Um, so let's talk about the pumpy. So the pumpy, when alt season comes around, blockchain 3.0 narrative with high transactions per second, that's going to gain traction. It's going to be very exciting. And then as more and more new money comes in, they're going to start to make these connections that we are already making. Uh, but we're going to be there first. And they're going to see Google and they're going to see IBM. And then Hashgraph is going to make some sort of announcements and all these different catalysts. You know, those are going to happen. They, they do plan to sell these tokens at a higher price than they are right now. And overall, the market is ripe for altcoins. So that's why it's so attractive to me. They have the partnerships. They have the war chest. Um, they just have those heavy hitters involved. And they have 500 projects being built on it. Actually, I know a person right now is building something in the App Store on Hashgraph. Uh, people are building on this platform and using it. And... That, that is enough for me to believe that this can definitely surpass some of these old clunky laggards that aren't, you know, just bloated up bag holder coins with large market caps. Um, Hashgraph is what's new and shiny. And I think as they start to really kind of push their marketing and get out there and more new money comes in, uh, now, now, 
now will be the time to get in before people really get excited because nobody's really talking about it anymore. So let's get right into the chart. Uh, I don't want to keep you guys too long. We like to keep these quick. And uh, let's look at the chart. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a this is what we would call a downtrend. Yes, this is this is not something I would almost not something I would normally recommend playing. To be honest, normally you want to watch these things kind of resolve themselves a little bit and prove themselves, which you can do. This is just me kind of more of a gut shot plus the market sentiment, like just the overall market atmosphere and just my own experience i feel like this is a level where you can really kind of strap in and you don't need to trade this too much you can just kind of hold on in here and wait for it to reverse however over the last few days it seems to be putting a little bit of of a move together this is nothing yet and it's actually hitting off the launch pad level where do i get that level from this was the level where it took off back in uh this was in february so went from about 200 sats to 800 so it did a 4x in in what two daily candles that's that's pretty crazy so that's how quickly this thing can go two daily candles it went up 4x um this is the exact level and it's also the level that acted as resistance here you see this wick breaks down you get the low this is the consolidation here this is where people loaded up <clears throat> And then as soon as it breaks out of this, now it's bullish. Um, so that's the level that we hit off of. And now we're in between, I'm sorry, yeah, we bounced off the top of this range. And now we're right there at this launch level. The next level would be right here. Uh, this is at about 250 sats. I call that one looking good. If we get above 250, now it's starting to look good. Now we can really kind of legitimately consider the potential of a true reversal here. Um, next level is now we're cooking. If we get up here, 335, that is a, a very significant point. Like the people that are scared to buy down here, you can wait for this to kind of cross this level and this downtrend line and bounce in between here. If you start to do this and bounce and bounce and then get up here and then bounce, like at some point here, you should be buying then, like at the very least. In my opinion, if it does something like this and holds on to looking good level, you get in there too. I mean, I'm in now. But, you know, these are, these are the levels. Um, last one is party time, 500 sats. That's a reasonable target on this long here. However, if you go through this, it's just, it's going to be extremely bullish. So that's the level we want. We want party time. We can get above party time. It's going to be a, a good time had by all, okay? So that's really what I'm looking for. I, I made sure to rush this video out, frankly, because I did see it starting to reverse off this level. Most altcoins are popping. This hasn't performed. Um, I think, uh, you know, plain and simple, I think I've said enough. I don't need to say too much. You make your own decisions, do your own research. But uh, I think this is going to play out very well. And, um, you know, it, do, it won't leave without you. It will give you an opportunity to get in. I, I don't expect it to do this again. Okay, not it could happen. But that's not what I expect. I think it'll give us some some room to to to, to get in if you miss the move or whatever. Uh, but you know, like always, make sure to follow me on Twitter. I interact. If you have questions, I mean, don't DM me. Like I, I don't. I, I get too many. I, it's hard for me to answer them all. But um, if you if you just at me or something, ask a question. You know, I'm always happy to help. Um, so. Yeah, that, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, I try to keep these short. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, uh, subscribe, comment. I got. I already know which one I'm going to do next. Follow me on Twitter. Drop in tons of alpha. Actually, there was a coin that we played the last couple of days. It's up like over 50%. Oasis. The ticker is Rose. Definitely keep an eye on that one because that can make a pretty big move if it continues. Uh, and you know, I talk about that one on Twitter if you want to if you want to learn more. Uh, check out trading-dojo.com and everybody trade safe. Good luck and enjoy yourselves. Have a good one.